This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. What? What's going on and welcome to Covering the Spread. My name is Tom Vecchio. MLB opening day is here and I'm set to break it all down. As a reminder, this is one of the many shows on the FanDuel Podcast Network. You can find that anywhere, whether it's Apple Podcasts, whether it's Spotify. Make sure to give it a like, follow, or subscribe. Leave a review. That'd be greatly appreciated. The video version we found on FanDuel TV Plus and FanDuel.com slash watch. You can find the article up on FanDuel.com slash research. And you can follow me on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1. Before we hop into things, say goodbye to Busted Brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a number one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's $200 to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager, only $10. First buys required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fandle.com. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or visit fandle.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, North Carolina, or Vermont. Call 100 Next Step. Protection Next Step to 53342 in Arizona. Call 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash Shan Connecticut. Call 109 with it in Indiana. Call 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghelp.com in Kansas. Call 1-877-770-STOP. Louisiana, visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland. Visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia or call 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gambling help on ma.org or call 800-327-5050-424-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-N-Y text hope Y in New York. MLB opening day is here. We have a full slate of games. A couple of player props I'm going to be running through. Uh, as a reminder, I'm here filling in for Jim. He will be back tomorrow to break things down. We had Austin Swim yesterday looking at some college football futures. On Monday, I was here uh, going over some MLB season-long player props, lead the league bets, those kind of things. So you can find uh, baseball preview on Monday, college football preview yesterday, and then today is previewing opening day. Jim will be back tomorrow. So all the lines are posted for the games. We are missing some player props for a few games. So I have two props that I like for opening day and then two spots that I'm keeping a, a very close eye on once the lines get posted. So let's start off with the Toronto Blue Jays visiting the Tampa Bay Rays. Rays are um, slight, minus 134 home favorite, 7.5 over under. Normal stuff there. Let's go to pitcher props, and let's go to the Blue Jays. Jose Barrios, under 5.5 strikeouts, sitting at minus 132. When we look to the Tampa Bay Rays with their current active roster from last season versus righties, they had a 22.1% strike rate, which was the 12th lowest in the league. Very disciplined at the plate. They know how to wait on pitches. They're not swinging and missing. They can take walks. They also finished last year, again, current active roster with a 117 WRC plus versus righties, which was the, the third highest in the league, and a 184 team ISO, which was the seventh highest in the league. Kind of the usual stuff from the Rays. They are patient at the plate. They put the ball in play. They can pile up the runners, a walk here, a single a walk, you name it. The Rays can certainly pile on the runs. And, you know, Barrios isn't a dominant strikeout pitcher. And to start, or at least this year, through spring training, he had a low 16.1% strike rate. Now, that does come from a very small 13-inning sample size. So we have to take that with a bit of a grain of salt. We know that... Overall, Barrios is a pitcher that is never going to be out there racking up 10 some odd strikeouts on a nightly basis. He is a pitcher that can push towards seven if the matchup allows it, but this is not the kind of matchup that we should be seeing allowing him to do so. So also we have to factor in that this is the first start of the season for all pitchers, really, except for Glass now and and you Darvish since they already pitched last week when they were over in South Korea. Most of these pitchers are not stretched out. These pitchers are not going to be going for 90 or 100 pitches. So that's what we want to be factoring in as well. Not only is, is the matchup less than ideal for Barrios, 
He isn't a dominant strikeout pitcher to begin with. He had a, a slow spring training, and he's going up against this you know, very disciplined lineup that really doesn't allow pitchers to reach for their strikeout ceiling. So again, a 13-inning sample size we can't bank on, but you know, seeing last year a 23% strikeout rate or a 19.8% strikeout rate the year before doesn't really inspire a lot of confidence that Barrios is going to be going out there racking up eight or nine strikeouts. So under five and a half strikeouts for Jose Barrios to start the season. That is the first prop that I like. Next up, let's turn to the Houston Astros. Minus 152 home favorites taking on the New York Yankees. Let's go to a very simple prop. Uh, this game also has an eight and a half over under, a little bit higher. Should be some scoring here. Let's go to a very simple prop for the Houston Astros. Player to record two plus total bases. Jose Altuve, minus 105. as basically as straightforward as we possibly can get. We know Altuve is a solid hitter. I spoke about Nestor Cortez on Monday in terms of taking under 139 strikeouts for the entire season. And you know, while I still think he's a solid pitcher, this is just a tough matchup. Altuve is a solid hitter. Last season versus lefties, he had a 136 WRC+. Plus. He had a 367 Woba, 313 Babbitt. Solid 192 ISO. Most importantly, a 14% strikeout rate versus lefties. Does not waste chances at the plate. Nest Cortez last year versus righties, or I should say Nest Cortez last year just overall didn't pitch a full season. It was obviously hampered due to injuries. But last year in his time versus righties, he had a 520 XFIP. It allowed a 312 Babbitt. He allowed 1.59 home runs per nine to righties. And yes, Altuve is a, a hitter that has plenty of power, but is also, again, very patient and disciplined at the plate, can put the ball in play. We know he's going to be at the top of the Astros lineup. He's going to see plenty of chances. And when it comes to the Astros lineup, they have so many good hitters at the top of the lineup, whether it's Altuve, Don, Kyle Tucker, Bregman. He's never going to be, like, they can never pitch around Altuve. He always has to see good pitches because they can't allow hitters on base for free. So anytime we can get a solid hitter at near even money, I'm going to be looking to do so. And, you know, Altuve was okay to start the spring. You know, batting average, not that batting average is super important, but batting average is in the 250s. Wasn't super dominant. Uh, again, a super small sample size. He only had uh, was it 36 uh, plate appearances or, or 32 at-bats, whatever it was. So, again, not a super big sample size, but realistically, Altuve is a, is a proven hitter for you know 10-plus years in the league. We know where we're going to be getting from him. So I will take two-plus total bases and near even money. It's minus 105 for Jose Altuve at the top of a very powerful lineup any day of the week, especially in a matchup against the pitcher who, yeah, I'm essentially looking to fade this season overall. Also didn't have the strongest spring, allowed some home runs. Strikeout rate is, is fine, but I'm not too worried about that without Tuve. So starting off the year, Barrios, under five and a half strikeouts, minus 132. Altuve to record two plus total bases, minus 105. I would play this down to minus 115, you know, depending on where you're looking across the industry, but not uh, any more than that. So those two to start the season. As I mentioned, there are a number of games that don't have anything posted. They, the game line's posted, but there are no player props posted. So one of those games that I want to be focusing in on once the, the player props do get posted is going to be the Baltimore Orioles at home taking on the Angels. Minus 178, the Orioles are as money line favorites at home. Orioles obviously have high expectations this season. They were very solid last year. I think they're obviously looking to build on that this year. Very powerful lineup. They're bringing Corbin Burns, et cetera, et cetera. Comes down to their hitters for me today. Patrick Sandoval starting for the Los Angeles Angels. Sandoval is about as average of a pitcher as you can imagine. He's not a dominant strikeout pitcher. It allows way too many runners on base for free with a walk rate of a 12.3% versus righties. He had a 465 XFIP last year. He doesn't allow a whole lot of home runs, right? Not, not a big home run pitcher, not a big fly ball pitcher. It was only a 0.85 home runs per nine last year versus righties, but he doesn't strike out hitters at a high rate at 20.1%. He allows hitters on base for free with the 12.3% walk rate. And he just gets hit around with the 316 Babbitt last year, right? His fly ball rate is at 29.7%, which is really low, right? But he pitches to contact. So it's a hitter gets up. He's not going to be dominant on the mound, strike the mound. He either lets them on for free. Next hitter comes up and he just gets hit around single, single walk, walk, single, whatever it be. It's never going to be giving up, you know, three, four home runs. So with that said, when it comes to the Orioles lineup, they obviously have a number of fantastic hitters. What I'm going to be looking for is an RBI prop from someone in the top four of their lineup 
at, as close to even money or better as we can, whether it's Rutschman, Henderson, Mountcastle, Santander, Mullins, Hayes, someone in the top four of their lineup, preferably three or four, that's at even money or better, plus 105, plus 110, to record an RBI. I'm expecting them to get runners on base, you know, kind of just, uh, you know, circle, circle the bases, kind of just go from station to station, pile up the hits, pile up the walks. Someone's going to be in a good spot. So once the lines are posted for the Orioles, that's where I'm going to be looking. Anything at plus money or better for someone in the top four of their lineup to pick up an RBI. And of course, if you have questions about this, you always can hit me up on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio one. If you say, oh, okay, I see this player. He's, he's at plus 100. It's just even money. You know, what would you think of this? Okay. You know, that's always obviously up for a discussion with, you know, plus 100 or plus 115. They're a little bit different. Obviously it comes down to maybe the skill of the player where they're in the batting lineup, all those sorts of things. But, you know, the Orioles are a team. I think a lot of people are going to be going to time and time again this year, just because their expectations are so high. They have great offense. They have a lot, a lot of young players. There's going to be games where they, you know, pile up 10 runs. There's just going to be a lot of value to be extracted from that lineup overall. You know, we have a you know high profile matchup with Strider and Wheeler and, while game lines are posted for this one, whether it be batter props and pitcher props, I don't have a whole lot of interest in this game. I think obviously it should be exciting. Could be some weather issues in this game. Strikeout uh, props are where, are where they should be for both of these pitchers. I'm never going to take an under on Spencer Strider. I know he's not fully stretched out because it's going to be his first start. He didn't uh, you know, have a high volume of pitches in spring training, but I'm also never going to take an under on his strikeout prop. Uh, and then also on the other side, yeah, there's great hitters on both sides, but it's you know, these are two potential Cy Young candidates. I don't want to be going to, uh, you know, any of these hitters for a hitting prop when just the pitchers are so good. We can find a path of of least resistance elsewhere, and that probably comes down to someone on the Orioles because Sandoval is really not a great pitcher. So the other spot that I'm going to be looking for a hitting prop is going to be all the way at one of the West Coast games with the Arizona Diamondbacks taking on the Colorado Rockies. Kyle Freeland is on the mound for the Rockies. Freeland is not a pitcher I am worried about in any capacity. Yes, some of his splits last year are at Coors Field. We have to take that into account. But even if we look at when he was away versus righties, he's still not a good pitcher. Allowing 2.20 home runs per nine in away games last year versus righties and a 5.65 xFIP. So doesn't matter if he's at home. Doesn't matter if he's at a wet, he's away. Still not a good pitcher versus righty. So Christian Walker is going to be my ideal target when it comes to the Diamondbacks lineup. He's got tremendous power versus lefties. We know that last year versus left-handed pitching, 319 ISO, 141 WRC plus, 19.5% strikeout rate. He's got everything we could possibly imagine. He's got 381 Woba. Kyle, uh, Christian Walker is the spot that I want to go against Kyle Freeland. I think there's very, very clear home run upside for Christian Walker. He had a 48.6% fly ball rate last year and a 39.6% hard contact rate. That is awesome versus lefties. It comes down to the lines. What are the lines going to look like? What does his total base prop look like? What does his RBI prop look like? Uh, you know, what does his you know home run odds look like? That's what it comes down to for Christian Walker. Also, Kyle Freeland allowed a 40.6% fly ball rate and a 41.2% hard contact rate versus righties. This basically puts Christian Walker in, in a, a near ideal spot. Uh, I believe the roof is going to be open in Arizona. It's nice, uh, nice climate there this time of year, not too hot. Should be really good hitting weather in Arizona. We also have to remember that Arizona is the second highest stadium when it comes to elevation behind course field. So this is a great spot for Christian Walker to get the year started off on the right foot. It simply comes down to what are the lines? I assume his uh, two plus total base prop is going to be a little bit juiced minus minus one twenty five, maybe one minus one thirty, maybe even more just because this is such a good matchup. And they're also massive home favorites, as you can see my minus two thirty five. So the expectation is that the Diamondbacks are going to score some runs. So the total base prop may not be it, but the RBI prop, that's where we could be getting some value with Christian Walker. And again, it simply comes down to what that line is going to be. And if it's not going to be Christian Walker, you know, obviously Corbin Carroll's amazing. It is a lefty-lefty matchup to start. You know, they pile up the runs and they get to the Rockies bullpen. I don't think anyone's going to be too worried about getting to the Rockies bullpen and then seeing someone, you know, even if it's Corbin Carroll, getting into a spot where he picks up two-plus little bases and an RBI. So Diamondbacks... 
and Orioles, you know, I would say two teams that kind of had similar seasons last year, younger teams, exceeding expectations, coming into a new season, uh, you know, expanded expectations, great lines for them, ton of power. You know, that's really where we should be looking. And again, it just comes down to where the lines are going to be posted. The one thing I'll say about the Cardinals and the Dodgers, I kind of touched on glass now, and I guess I, I could touch on you uh, Darvish as well. You know, these, these pitchers pitched last week, as I said. So that is something that we can be looking to take advantage of, where some of these pitchers, again, aren't fully stretched out. Some of their lines uh, are a little bit too high. You know, glass now went five innings. He only had three strikeouts versus the Padres when they were in South Korea, but 77 pitches in his first start, which means he probably could push to 85, maybe in high 80s against the Cardinals. And we know that Glass now is an extremely efficient strikeout pitcher, can really pile up the strikeouts in a hurry. So depending on what his line is, I think it was at five and a half for the game in South Korea. If that's six and a half, I'll certainly be looking to Tyler Glass now for the Dodgers. Surprise, surprise. They're going to be super popular this year as well. I don't mind going to a Freddie Freeman total base prop going up against uh, Miles Miklos for the Cardinals. You know, lefty-righty splits uh, in favor of Freddie Freeman. He's a fantastic hitter. I'm uh, not worried about the strikeouts. Um, yeah, another Freddie Freeman prop could be fired up tomorrow, again, depending on what the line is. So we have a loaded slate. There's a little bit just unknown because the lines aren't posted. But early season baseball, there's a lot we can take advantage of just because players may be getting off to hot and cold starts. We have a very limited sample size from spring. We know the pitchers aren't stretched out. And some pitchers go through some ups and downs early in the season before they settle in and they really get their pitch count up there to find a groove on a game-by-game -game basis. I think we can uh, kind of jump on some of those lines and, and jump on some early hitting lines, early strikeout prop unders. So that's really where I want to start the season. So Jose Altuve to record two plus total bases at minus 105. Jose Barrios under five and a half strikeouts, sitting at minus 132. And then waiting on RBI props from someone on the Orioles, again, in the top four at even money or better. And then specifically from the Diamondbacks, a Christian Walker prop, probably an RBI prop. Again, I think his total base prop is going to be a little bit juiced. So I certainly want to turn to an RBI prop, which is great because there's so many different ways he can get that. A walk with the, the bases loaded, a fly, a sack fly, a simple single. There's multiple paths to him accomplishing an RBI, which is always so great. He doesn't actually have to get on base. So Christian Walker, wait and see. Someone from the Orioles, wait and see. Barrios under Altuve, two plus total bases. Maybe something to do with the Dodgers glass now or Freddie Freeman. Baseball season is officially here. We'll, of course, be running things throughout the week. We'll have a podcast up later today to break things down from a fantasy perspective. I will be doing that for the solo shot for opening day tomorrow. That will be posted on today, Wednesday afternoon. Jim will be back on Thursday. Of course, I have a season preview for some player long season long player bets on Monday. Austin Swim had college football preview yesterday. So that does it for today's podcast. As a reminder, this is one of the many shows on the FanDuel Podcast Network. You can find that anywhere, whether it's Apple Podcasts, whether it's Spotify. Make sure to give it a like, follow, or subscribe. Leave a review. That is greatly appreciated. The video version we found on FanDuel TV Plus and FanDuel.com slash watch. You can follow me on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1. Until next time, good luck with your bets.